everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. Ah, the sun. Hey guys, I just want to remind you, if you guys are enjoying the videos and want to support the channel, the biggest thing you can do is to hit the thumbs up button. Today, uh, I don't know what it is, Friday, a um, neighbor called and said he wanted me to mow some of his hay because his mower broke. So right now, uh, I'm heading over to get my mower and we're at the 7140, so we'll go hook up to that, make sure th everything looks good on it, and then we'll go uh, mow that. I'll inspect the thing fully once I get this mowed. It's only like an hour's worth, so I guess hopefully nothing breaks, but uh, yeah, we'll go hook that up and go mow some hay. I got here and I forgot last year, I brought this over at the telehandler and set it in here. So one, my three points in the ground. Two, my rake's in the way, so I can't hook up to it. Waiting for Cole, he's gonna come get me. This three point is a pain in the butt to hook up to. It takes like 30 minutes. I'm sure if you're good at it, you probably do it faster, but you hook up to it three times a year and it's just a pain. Oh boy, we got nice weather today. <sighs> Looks like Champion C is pulling in to get their pro boxes. Also, the Ben guys are making really good progress. Okay, I should probably go grab the skid loader before Champion guys get mad at me for taking too long. Hey, you stay out of my grass. Not like that's ever happened before. Hi, Brandon. I think he's in a phone call right now. The reason why they brought a semi here today is because we need to load up these black boxes, also known as a pro box. Well, hello, hello, hello. Nice and easy now. Meet Jack and Jill. Hey, buddy. Hey. I hear another one. See if we can find them. Oh, we got another one. We got two of them. Hello. 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 Oh, don't bite me. Cutest little things. So at this farm here, we also store, store our uh, two older discs. We don't use these very often. We used to use them quite a bit, but now with the new uh, vertical tillage piece we have, we don't use these very often. Probably sell one and just keep one for if we need to uh, work up some drawways or something, but I think I found some more goats. We got got three of them here. Hello. Oh, we got some cows too. No. Not impressed. I think we got every animal to mankind here. Look, we got kittens. Look at them. Hello. Hi. Coles is way over there and I'm right here. I told him to come get me, but I guess we'll see how far I make it before he uh, shows up. I'm a little impatient right now. Oh well, I guess the grass can dry a little bit more. It's The ground's a little wet, but I got flotation tires, so we're all right. I could use some exercise anyway, so we'll see how far we make it. I'm almost halfway there. You know, just walking. I'm almost out of breath. Me and my father, we drink our fair amount of pop. I've cut down to two cans a day and I've already lost six pounds since Monday night. I'm surprised I have teeth, but who needs teeth when you can get dentures? You know, if I had a volleyball right now, I could put my handprint on it, and I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and then I could be like, Wilson! Thinking about just getting a horse. A horse will follow you anywhere, and I could just ride the horse back. How about that? Some stranger picked me up. There weren't all of our extra totes. I think that's why Cole's so late, but I don't know. Where I'm gonna be working today in the cemetery, it's a little gooey up here and stuff. With the tracks on the skid loader, that helps so we don't sink and tear up the cemetery. I did stick a little plywood on the other side there, so when I'm coming up, it gives a little firmness so we don't sink before the grave. If you see us driving the uh, skid loader on a grave to try to pack it down, we are not in any way trying to do it to be unrespectful to the family. We're just trying to get the dirt pushed back down. If we don't try to pack it in, there's a lot of air in there. We could be coming back 10, 12 times on this one easily. I think we'll go ahead and put some grass seed on this right away and then kind of rake that in, make it look nice and pretty. I'm gonna load up the skid loader and I think we're gonna head back to Cole's place. Oh, guys, guys, look at this, look at this. Mm -hmm. Got ourselves a new hat. All right. All right, guys, a lot of you original fans are gonna remember Brandon from Champion Seed. But he's here today. We're gonna go look at some of the Champion corn that we planted. We're gonna do, well, I'll just let Brandon say what we're gonna do because he's a lot smarter than I am. Well, like Cole said, we're here to kind of look at the Champion corn, kind of do our early season scouting, look at emergence, vigor, and how and how the crop is progressing here in, in the springtime. And then we also have a, a brand new drone with us today that will actually be able to fly a serpentine pattern throughout the field, take pictures from 200 feet in the sky, take all every
every single image, analyze it, and we'll get a map of the entire field that'll tell us how many plants are in the field throughout those different portions. All right, we're gonna whip out the $40 drone. So looking at the field right here where we're at, this is a little bit of a compacted area. This is a spot where we'd fill our semis and stuff. So this gets a lot of traffic. And it's actually looking really nice. We can contribute this even emergence in this compacted area to the hydraulic downforce that we installed on our planter this year. So far, I'm pretty impressed. Holy cow. So this is what is gonna be strapped on the camera and this is what's gonna take all the images. A little less of a camera and more of a sensor. And so essentially what it'll be picking up is the green color from the plants and it'll be able to black out all other color around it. And that's what helps the algorithm in the program see each individual plant. In addition to that, we'll also be taking NDVI imagery throughout the whole field, which is essentially how green your crop is, which relates pretty well to crop stress. Throughout the year, we'll be able to fly this, get NDVI uh, of the field, of the plot, and see if maybe one hybrid is a little bit more stressed than another hybrid, responding to weather events, uh, disease pressure, a whole host of concerns throughout the whole growing season. This sensor will be able to fly multiple times throughout the year, not just at emergence. You guys ready for a little plant identification? So right here we have corn. Right here we have the rare rusty nail. We don't want the rare rusty nail in our field because these contribute to flat tires. Flat tires aren't fun. So when it comes to this champion field, we have two different champion varieties here. On this half of the field, we have 58 a18 and on that half of the field we have 53 a20 this side's 108 day corn and this side is 103 day and by 108 day and 103 day i'm referring to the time it takes for the corn to go from a seed to the time that it's fully matured it gets way more technical than that but that's the basics so as i'm walking around here talking to myself waiting for brandon to get the drone in the air i'm just i'm just doing a quick observation of the field so one of the first things i look at is the weed pressure in the field when i look down the road Am I seeing any weeds in between? If we look here, we got some really small ones just kind of poking their head through. And when it comes to weeds, we want to get them when they're small. It's a lot easier to take care of a small weed than a big weed. Kind of like it's a lot easier to steal lunch money from a kindergartner than a 45 year old. So our corn is just a little bit too short yet for us to spray. If we spray it when it's too short, it can actually burn the plant and it can stunt its growth. So once these corn plants get about three inches taller, we'll be safe to come out here and spray. That way we can get these weeds when they're little. But overall, this field's looking really nice. Oh, we're having slight technical difficulties. Thank the good Lord above for online forums. I think we're ready. You okay? Just doing a little calibration. So this thing's gonna go up in the air and it's gonna go back and forth across the entire 150 acres here. Out of battery. Pretty cool. We got Zach putting on the pin. We gotta take the old draw bar out. Real put the mower on. And we are mowing. Got our first pass going here. We'll go along the edge. We'll see what we can get done here. We're not doing this little finger here. They got a guy that just needs a little bit of hay. He's almost out. But once uh, we get into full hay season, we'll uh, do some of these other drawways too. We stuck the drone on the charger. So we're gonna go look at a bean field here quick to see how our champion beans are doing. I'll dig one of these soybeans up here. So soybeans start off a little bit slower than corn does in the spring. So early on, we just kind of want to look for a nice, even, consistent stand. Don't want to see a bunch of gaps in the row. Want to look at our root system. Make sure that that's growing out well and then also look for the vegetative growth on top i'd say these beans look really good especially as we drive around the countryside they look to be kind of on the the leading side of of how far along beans are in the area so pretty pleased with what we're seeing so as you can see these little bumps um, on the the root system of the soybean are the the nodules so that's the the bacterium that'll actually fixate nitrogen uh, for the plant from the soil. As we're walking across the field here, I'm looking at the rows and how the row shutoffs worked when we got into an area that we already planted. So Cooper was planting into here and then right when we got to the end rows, it stopped. So that way we didn't plant through into an area that had already been planted to our saving seed. Look at that, plant, 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 plant. Nothing, right when we hit the line. Saving money. Our ag leader stuff was working phenomenally. Yeah, replant my beans. <laughs> I don't want to undo Daddy Cornstar's hard work. Last little pass here, small draw away. Once we get done, I'll get out and kind of show you how it cuts and how the, the turtles work on the mower itself. Well, the center link pin came out and now I'm stuck in the middle of the road. Oh man, I see a cracked part. 
No good. We just got done checking out the field across the road and we hopped over to this one. This field here is a different variety, but it also has a different seed treatment on it. We have what's called the VIP treatment. So this is the expensive treatment. Over there's the, the less expensive one. So we're just doing a little bit of testing here to see and how it performs for us. So planted virtually the same day, one right after the other. These beans are noticeably a little bit taller. As Cole was saying, our VIP treatment is a little bit more expensive, but it has a few more modes of action, three different fungicides, better control for nematodes and sudden death syndrome. It'll be interesting to maybe do some weight checks this fall both sides of the road and see if that seed treatment is indeed able to pay for itself. And for those of you who aren't familiar to farming at all, I apologize if we're saying stuff that's way over your head. And honestly, a lot of this stuff is over my head, but we learn as we go. I'll do my best to explain. We heard a oof, what does that mean? Not a bad oof, just a, oh, we had a double. So two, uh, two beans must have dropped out of the planter at the exact same time. And uh, one was able to emerge and one wasn't. So we found him still underneath of the soil. Any yield predictions? The yield prediction category pretty early this year. I'm going to say today these will confidently do above 60 bushel beans. Got to straighten out a little bit here, but uh, I can't get this back in to come up. Dad's on the way with the skid loader and he's going to come push that. Hopefully didn't bend the PTO shaft. I think we'll be okay. I don't think it uh, went too far back, so... I guess we'll see. The mower comes along, cuts the grass. Instead of like a lawn mower that chops it into tiny pieces, it puts in long pieces. So it just cuts the bottoms off. So then you have long pieces of grass for the uh, animals and whatnot. You don't want it too long because otherwise it gets too coarse and then it's kind of hard. We have a little bit of a bummer here. We had the batteries charging for a good two hours. Guess they're not charged enough for us to put the drone back up and continue. So we have information on half the field. So at least we have a good amount of data that we can analyze. Brandon ordered more batteries. So next time he comes out, we'll be able to do the whole shebang. It looks like Cooper's hogging the road. Let's get him taken care of and off the road. Whoa. It sounds like he might have did something. I hear some bad noise. Suppose something got bent. Let's check it out. These little blades here go around 100 miles per hour and it looks like it's just hitting in there. We better see what we can do. I didn't think Brandon was ever going to leave. And also, if you guys want to check out some champion seed, maybe plant some for yourself, I'll include the link to their website in the description. Look, we got Cooper out here mowing his alfalfa patch. This is satisfying. So Cooper's running his mower through this, and now that it's cut off, he's just gonna let it kind of chill here on the ground for a couple days, let it dry out, and then he'll come through with his rake, and then he'll make it into some nice rows. That way he can come through with his baler and bale it. This is what we call the first cut. And we call it that because this is the first cut of the year, which is the best cut because it produces the most hay. And then each cut after produces just a little bit less. Generally speaking, if a guy's on top of it and has good weather, they can get a good three cuts, maybe four in our area, but you gotta get really, really lucky to get four. But three's a solid year. Last year, Cooper ran into some issues and he only got two off. We're over here at Cole's place. We're just gonna do a little bit, see how the new baler works, make sure it's gonna work for the season. Hopefully this dries out and we miss the rain that's coming and we'll get her bail. Freshly cut, smells good out here. I don't think I'm bailing the neighbors. I think he's doing squares. I have a square baler, but I have yet to use it. The first time I ever worked on it, I actually ran my finger through the flywheel and tore my whole nail off. So kind of like don't want to use that, but I might do some squares this year, not sure. I really wish the camera did this view justice because it's beautiful here. So today we spent a lot of time with Brandon checking out a whole bunch of fields to see how they're looking at their early stages. That took a large chunk of the day. When it comes to working on a farm, there are a lot of days that don't go exactly how we want them to go. We don't have days where we can just work 16 hours and get a whole bunch of stuff done. Sometimes we have days like today where we have a lot of meetings and stuff. There's stuff you have to do, but they just take time. So unfortunately, we didn't get to work on the garage at all. Hey, there's raccoons on the ground. Man, you guys look so cute. I see you over there. It's trying to flank me. But really, we don't have that much stuff left here in this building. It's gonna be really nice to get all this stuff off the floor. That way we can finally tear down the ceiling and we can tear down the walls, get all this old rotten insulation out of here. Not only will the building smell a lot better, but it will also keep raccoons from living in here. Yeah, don't they just look so cute? Hey, buddy. I'm really not a big fan of taking out critters, but 
Those raccoons are destructive. I really want to pet him. I know it's probably not a good idea. I'm just gonna have to kindly evict you from the building. Man, you're not scared of me, are you? Rodrigo, what are you doing? All right, Rodrigo, come on, let's go for another ride. Come on, let's go show you to Neva. You've ridden on the shovel before. While I'm out here, I should probably address the Oliver 1950 that was sitting in the shed for like 30 years. I know before I said that we were planning on selling it, but we kind of had to change of plans. This is the first tractor that dad really remembers driving around. So it means something to him and Cooper's like, hey, I'd kind of like to get that running. So that's what we're gonna do. What's in your hand, Cole? It's Rodrigo. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi, little buddy. Oh, we could be best friends forever. Oh, he's my best friend. I love you. Hi. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay, we brought Rodrigo back to his family. I suppose that makes a pretty good spot to end the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. We'll see you in the next one.